All right, we're back again, ladies and gentlemen, to continue the series on the misconceptions of cinematography, things that I never thought about when I started, which end up being the entire job. And last time we did time, uh, well, you know, if budgets get bigger, you'll get more time and things will be more relaxed and you'll be able to enjoy it. And, you you know, it'll be you and the gaffer and the grip and maybe the director and the production designer and you'll all be sitting around the monitor and you'll just be sculpting these beautiful things and everybody's input will be fantastic and there'll never be another bad day until you get there on set and nobody cares except you and, you know, the gaffer uh, got a divorce last year and still can't stop talking about it. The grip hates his job. Um, but, you know, there are positive days too. Like maybe you get the, a unicorn situation on set and everybody's happy. I don't know. Well, don't listen to me. I'm, I might be a little bit cynical in that way. Uh, maybe things are good for you. Either way, uh, what I never thought about and is 99% of the job and why great cinematographers are great cinematographers is management. 100% management of people, of people, of the production, of everything, because nobody cares about the image except you. There's all this money floating around on a project and there's one person who's fighting for the image. Maybe two if you're lucky, if you've got a great director uh, that is interested in these things. But really it's you. And in the commercial space, when you come on late to a project, good luck getting much of that budget spend towards you unless you're the squeaky wheel. But you are managing people to create the vision that you have come up with, that you've cooked up with in your little head uh, all by yourself in pre-production. You've gone away and you've thought, I want to do this. I want to do Blade Runner meets The Revenant uh, meets... Uh, I don't know, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Like, this is how this dog food commercial is going to go. You're going to love it. People are going to be amazed that we decided to do four by three and we rolled the camera. Except you don't really roll the camera on set, right? You're not that person. You're the person that comes up with the idea. So what happens if you have to manage the people to actually do that? And how do you get people motivated? It's like, okay, one motivation, I would think from the outside, if I was, well, being a small business owner, right? As a cinematographer, you own a little tiny little business. I would want individuals who are enthusiastic. I would want people who, when I hired them, that they came on board with solutions. They wanted to help create this bigger thing. That's what I'm trying to do when I get a job. If somebody calls me, I'm trying to do the best job I can because, number one, uh, that's the whole job itself is to like help the people with the production along to get great images and images that they're happy with. So that's the role. So just taking pride in what you do is good. But also because I want more jobs. Right? If, if a person is giving me a job, guess what? They have jobs to give. I want more jobs. I should be good to that person. I should be nice and I should do things that will make them look better. Well, that's the same thing I'm looking for for my own team. It's like if you're a gaffer, if you're a grip, if you work for those individuals, if you're in the camera team, everything you should be doing should be making the cinematographer's job easier. But that's not how it always works out. And eventually you will have to manage those individuals because maybe they work with a different style. Maybe they work at a different pace. Maybe they uh, work with different lingo. Like how many times I've been on set where people turn to me and look confused about how I call something. It's like you can either put up a stink about that or you can just get along and just get on with it. Uh, there are all of these things that come down to management. You're going to be talking to people all day long. You're going to be trying to get people to do what you want all day long. And sometimes you're going to have to do that by listening to their terrible ideas. Right? Some people just have horrendous ideas. And you can shoot them down and see how that goes. Or you can embrace them and see how that goes. And you can make these little decisions, but what is important is that you are managing individuals. Not only that, you're managing individuals that then collectively create a team. So you have to think about the team dynamics, individual dynamics, and this is what you will spend all of your time doing. Very little time will, be, will you be just controlling the camera. Again, depends on the budget level, but as you move up, as you move up in budget, right, the responsibilities are pulled away from you knowing how to turn the camera on. Like that skill, although it's good to turn the camera on and, have, and know how to do that, that skill isn't as important as trying to help the production predict out three weeks from now how many people we're going to need on set for X scene or for Y look that we're trying to create, right? That's where the value is. That's where the utility of having a cinematographer who's experienced and productive on board, that's where productions get it. So that's where you're going to be spending your time. Then you have to communicate with those around you about all those tools, not only about all the tools that you're going to need, but then what happens if we don't, if we aren't able to access those tools? So you're constantly running through scenarios of, okay, if we get X, we do Y. If we only get Y, that means we have to do Z. All of these things have to keep coming up and you have to keep the team in the loop. So it's not just, you, you can't just spring it on people. I mean, you could spring it on people once or twice, but like if your crew is always chasing their tail, they're not going to be pumped, right? And when the crew isn't pumped, uh, that will significantly nosedive efficiency. And as efficiency nosedives, 
you already, we've already talked about how little time you already have on set. If you eat into that 10% with a terrible attitude or people just upset with how communication is being passed from one entity to another, which you would be like, what? That, that doesn't, surely that can't happen on set. It happens all the time. People have hissy fits all the time. This isn't, it's like an office. Have you ever worked in an office? It's horrendous. But people find stuff to get mad about all the time, like little tiny things. The film set is the exact same. Like we're not immune from these arguments or from these, the, the bubbling up of these, uh, you know, issues that, that become giant things. Like, uh, are you going to deal with a crew revolt in your time? Yes. Like you're going to have a huge backfire. You're going to have a clash of heads, especially as you start traveling around and you get recommendations from other people and personalities start to come into the mix. Like I've been on jobs where unbeknownst to me, the grip and the gaffer hated each other. Now, both trying to get the job done without trying to help the other one at all. And that's just because I, ste I stepped into a horrendous situation. Like I didn't know that. I didn't insider information that that was going to happen. I got recommendations for both individuals. Both seemed competent. Both could do their jobs, but they hated each other. <laughs> and I wasn't privy to that. So they've signed up for the jobs. They hate each other. And who has to bear the brunt of that is me as I'm standing around telling the director that this should happen 10 minutes ago, but it's taken 20 because uh, they aren't talking or they're not communicating. It's like people problems are the business, whether you think they are or they aren't. People are everything in this business, motivating them, finding out how to communicate, finding out how much information is necessary to pass on because you are the great filter, right? All of the problems, all of the challenges, they filter from you downwards and the same back up. You have to decide what to pass on and what not to pass on. And you will get better at that by doing it and seeing how poor uh, one strategy is over another, but there's no getting around it. It's like you, you're not, if you're not great with people and understanding motivations and incentives and being able to get on top of those issues early, I think you're going to struggle as a cinematographer. I know that I have in that department because I thought, well, everybody's just going to be enthusiastic. Everyone's just going to understand that this is what we're going for. And, uh, you know, as long as you tell them and you tell them what you need, that's pretty much management done. But uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Like on set, between shots, between setups, just it's a constant, like you have to keep the, keep the team motivated. You have to keep them together. You have to keep them all shooting towards that same goal that's in your head that you're trying to lay out for those individuals to help create because you can't do it on your own. I mean, you can try, but uh, quickly you'll realize that there's just too much to be done for a single person to be responsible for all of it. And you need this team around you to not only to take your idea, but in a perfect world, they take your idea and they make it significantly better. And then you take credit for it. They don't mind you taking credit for it because you're going to get them a job the next time because you're a nice person, uh, unless you're not. And then you probably won't be working for long. So get good now at managing people. Understand how to motivate individuals. Understand how to talk to people in stressful situations or maybe talk to them before the stress is induced. That way you're able to do it in a calm, cool, collected manner so that uh, there's no panic on set. Because really, you know, it is, it's a top-down system. Like if the top of the food chain, if the director and the producer and everyone is relaxed, you know, you can feel that in the crew. You can feel that trickle down where if you're stressed, if you're worried, if you're flicking through NDs as you're sitting at the camera, if you're starting to play with the color temperature while you're at the camera or you're, you know, you're telling your operator to just step aside for a sec because you want to line up a shot, it breaks down pretty fast. It breaks down faster than I would have thought. So. Do yourselves a favor and, uh, and understand what makes people tick and how to communicate with them because that will make you a better cinematographer in the end. Okay, that's going to do it for this little trip down uh, mistakes that I've made lane and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.